Hi friends. Most of the smokers, when they get uh, change in voice, it might be a larynx cancer that might be affecting them. So in the initial stages, like T1 stage or T2 stage, we can go for laser excision, which can be repeated n number of times. So that is a safe procedure also. Or else, if you don't want any surgical intervention, then you can go for radiotherapy. Survival outcomes or the quality of life outcomes of both laser surgeries and radiotherapy in initial stages is almost same. Now the difference comes when the stage is third stage or fourth stage with cartilage erosion or there is extra laryngeal spread and there are nodes, multiple nodes. Then in these cases, it is probably better if you can go for surgical modality. But you know, as you know, in this surgery, we will be removing the entire voice box or the larynx. So the voice, normal voice of the patient will be hampered. So this is what most of the patients will fear. They will fear that they will not be able to speak. They will not be able to communicate. They, uh, it becomes a show, social stigma as well. So in these cases, I would like to tell you that if we use a voice processes of a better quality, the voice which is produced out of this voice processes is almost near normal because it is a lung powered speech. You can speak for a significantly long time. You can speak at least for sentences together. So my point is whenever you have proper indication, don't hesitate to undergo laryngectomy because there are multiple ways where you can be rehabilitated in the form of uh, having a voice processes. So this gentleman who is 60 year old underwent laryngectomy five years back for a recurrent lesion. Initially he underwent radiotherapy, but then it recurred. So he had to under salvage total laryngectomy, neck dissection followed by reconstruction with a PMMC patch. This patient is a teacher by profession. So he definitely has an intellect where he has to communicate with the society and with the students. So he wanted a voice processes which was placed at a second stage. So we have placed a secondary TEP. Now, but he has been using it for the past three years. It, it has got some candle infection and the voice processes is leaking now. There is a per TEP leak and peri TEP leak. So now we have a smart inserter and this is the process where uh, we are inserting the voice processes into him. This can be done comfortably under local anesthesia in a sitting position when the patient is completely awake. So this takes almost 10 minutes of time in order to change it. Next 5 to 10 minutes you will be seeing how this procedure is undertaken and also the experience of the patient with using voice processes because as I told you the quality of life is better, the life, the survival is better and so you can lead a normal life. So please don't hesitate to undergo any kind of laryngectomy for the want of your larynx which might be dysfunctional as well after undergoing chemo radiation. Thank you. Here we are trying to lubricate the tract tracheoesophageal puncture and also the voice processes. By gently holding the voice processes with the flanges with one mosquito forceps and by trying to rotate it and removing it with the help of other forceps by giving traction and counter traction we can remove the voice processes in total care should be taken that it should not break if it breaks the esophageal part might go into stomach and the tracheal part might go into the bronchus then again it is an issue where we have to deal with the foreign body bronchus so have a hold have a grip on the voice processor and remove it gently. Now this is a smart inserter where you can see that there is a esophageal flange and one tracheal flange. Now after pushing it, the esophageal flange will be crumpled and after inserting it into the smart inserter, now gently we have to put the inserter into the tracheoesophageal puncture site and try to push it with the help of ribbed surface and once you know that the esophageal flange has opened then you try to remove both the flange uh, the inserter and the ribbed surface outside and once the tracheal flange is also opened then you know that it is in position.
Just to swallow, we'll ask him to drink some water. So we have to see that there is no leak, peri TEP leak or pre through TEP leak when he's swallowing. Now once the position of the TEP is confirmed, voice processes is confirmed and we know that it is in position, there is no leak either through the TEP or peri TEP. Now it is time we cut the attachment, final attachment with the help of his scissors and after cutting the final attachment we have to see that the position of this TEP is proper so we place the attachment site at 6 o'clock position so that the hoodie which is present on the opposite side in the uh, esophageal part is located superiorly which will prevent any fluid from entering into the TEP thus prolonging the life of Three years since you got a problem. 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 Three years since you got a problem.